This week we are in Psalm 62. The first few verses read, Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from Him. Truly He is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. So the word soul here, um, truly my soul finds rest from God. This is a big word. The Bible has a number of these words that can be a little confusing to us. Heart, soul, spirit, mind, body, will. We're trying to always sort of tease them apart and figure out exactly where their parameters are. It's just a lot of overlap. These are not um, really tight terms in the Western kinds of, you know, um, Western kind of sense. So uh, just to understand soul refers to our command center. It's all sort of the essence of who we are. It's, there's a lot of overlap between soul and heart. And that the word rest, so my soul finds rest, the word rest means peace. We're not talking about sleeping in. We're talking about a pervading sense of well-being. Um, some translations, and I actually like this, they translate this as silence. <laughs> My soul waits in silence, uh, which is attractive because we live in a noisy culture. And I was just reminded yesterday that the word noise, in Latin, the word noise and the word nausea uh, have the same Latin root. So there's this sense of um, we're almost the noise, the clutter, the volume, the velocity of life can be overwhelming, can give us seasickness. And so we're looking for a soul that waits in rest and in silence. Um, So obviously, the big issue here is not external noise. It's internal noise. It's our head. It's our heart. It's all the busyness. And so one translation, (laughs) talking about a lot of translations here, one translation says uh, that only with God does my soul stop chattering. Right? Does the, do the inner voices, does the inner dialogue, the popcorn popper that's going off in my mind, does that settle down and I can be at peace and I can be at rest? So um, there's other things to know. This is, again, this is a rich psalm. The language, there's a lot of sort of poetic imagery here. Uh, but just know that this idea is that it's only in God that we're going to find that utter sense of peace and well-being that transcends all circumstances. So verses 1 and 2, we have David uh, talking to himself. There's a a pivot, attack, and he is going to talk down, verses 3 and 4, to the bad guys who are terrorizing him. And he says, um, how long will you assault me? Would Would all of you throw me down this leaning wall, this tottering fence? So he's describing himself as a leaning wall, right? Which is not what you want with a wall. You want a wall to be perpendicular. We don't know for sure. Suggestion, a lot of scholars think that this is uh, a psalm that David writes when he is fleeing from his son Absalom, uh, who staged the palace coup and is trying to kill him. So uh, David has fled the city. Um, and he's weak, and so he's saying to these people, you're, you're, coming at, <clears throat> you're coming after me like I'm a leaning wall. Verse 4, surely they intend to topple me from my lofty place. They take delight in lies with their mouths, they're blessed with their hearts, they're cursed. So by the way, just notice, David recognizes that he does enjoy a lofty place. Even though he's fleeing for his life, the, the life of the rich and the famous often uh, look a lot better from a distance than they do from up close. And so um, David David recognizes that he has enjoyed some privileges. And we should just recognize that, um, that we have a lot of privileges that we might take for granted and that there are always problems in this broken world. Even when even people we don't think have problems, they have problems. And so uh, the solution to your problem is not going to come from you know, adding another zero to your bank account or whatever that might be. The contentment that we're after is a contentment that ultimately only comes uh, from a right relationship with God. So my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Have a good day.